scientists are scouring the most remote parts of Africa for clues. The search for answers begins here in the Afar, northeastern Ethiopia. It's part of the Great Rift Valley, a deep cut in the earth where geologic forces are ripping Africa apart. Millions of years of history are brought to the surface in layers of exposed rock. It's hot and desolate. Dangerous, too. Ancient rivalries and modern weapons have turned the Afar into a no-man's land of simmering conflict. But Zurai Alemzigen has made this forbidding place his life's work. He's searching for the fossilized traces of our earliest human ancestors. The fossil bones of animals like antelopes, elephants, and pigs are abundant. But the fossils of our ancestors are extremely rare. Then, in a stroke of luck, Zurai makes the find of a lifetime. A find that illuminates our origins in a unique way. On that afternoon, we decided to survey this hillside. And the first thing that was spotted was the cheekbone of the face. It was a face so tiny, it had to be a baby. But not a baby chimp. He could tell that from its shape. The skull was embedded in sandstone, but as Arai turned it over, he could see more bones inside. Everything was crushed against uh, the base of the skull and completely covered by a sandstone block. Clues to the age of the fossil came from a distinctive feature in the landscape white bands of volcanic ash. And that is the volcanic ash dated to 3.4 million years ago. If the volcanic ash is 3.4 million years old, Zurai's fossil, which was lying just above it, must be younger. It was a child from the dawn of human evolution, about 3.3 million years ago. Zarai called the baby Salam, the Ethiopian word for peace. What were Salam and her family like? What kind of world did they live in? The answers are hidden in their fossil bones. Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Zarai's home. He's one of a whole new generation of African scientists trying to unravel the mysteries of human origins. Zarai has brought his precious fossil here to the National Museum. His challenge is to release her from the tomb of sandstone in which her bones are encased. He quickly identifies her. She's from a species considered by most scientists to be an ancient ancestor. Australopithecus afarensis, a small chimp-like creature who walked on two legs. This is the same species as the famous Lucy, discovered in the 1970s by Don Johansson. Lucy was terribly important because she was really an amalgam and she of, of different characteristics of ape and human. I think specimens like Salam and Lucy are extraordinary simply because you can look at them and see evolution in the making. But seeing evolution in the making will take some work. Salam's fossilized bones are solid rock held together by a mesh of soft sandstone. It has to be painstakingly removed. 
we spend hours, hours and hours and days and years and years and that removes the sand grains, grain by grain, working every day. He's been at it for eight long years, but the payoff has been amazing. As the work progressed, Zarai revealed an almost complete skull. And tucked beneath it was nearly her entire spine, along with both shoulder blades. Other bones were found nearby. An almost complete foot. This is the kneecap. The tibia here. Never before had a child's skeleton been found so ancient and so complete. Her bones would fit in a shoebox, but they speak volumes about her life. For example, to find out how old she was when she died, Zarai looked at her teeth, but not the baby teeth visible in her jaw, the adult teeth growing inside the bone, as seen in a CT scan. From that, we know Salam died at age three. Like Lucy, she testifies to a crucial step in our evolution. Unlike apes, these creatures walked upright, as the first fossil Don Johansson found clearly revealed. It was sticking out of the ground like that. And I gently tapped it with my uh, sneaker and this is what fell out of the ground and it is the, the you, this is your the top end of your shin bone so the kneecap would sit right in here and very close by in two pieces I found this bone and when you put them together and you see how they move and articulate that it has all the hallmarks of, uh, of an upright person. Other bones confirm that Lucy walked on two legs like us this is Lucy's pelvis, and uh, in a and you can see how different a chimpanzee is, and the reorientation of these these hip bones. In a in a chimp, they're facing straight forward. So here's this is this is what everybody's sitting on in their living room right now. So it, they're not identical, but clearly these two resemble each other much more closely, right? Than either one of these. Uh, resembles the pelvis of, uh, of an ape. From the waist down, Lucy was like us. From the waist up, she and her kind were all ape. Salam's skeleton is the same, with chimp-like shoulder blades giving her the range of motion needed for climbing and swinging. These ancient creatures must have spent time in the trees, possibly sleeping there at night to keep away from predators, but walking upright on the ground during the day. They were at home in two worlds.